Alright, this is going to be my playthrough of Clock Tower on the PlayStation. And I've been wanting to do this kind of thing for like a really long time. I finally have the chance to do it with my Dazzle DVD recorder. And now this this uh, this opening sequence is pretty boring. So I'm going to try to make it a little more exciting with my own voiceovers. You know what's really sad? I know every line to this opening part. Professor Barton. Professor Barton. What on earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock I know, gray voice acting, huh? Research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. Now I'm going to probably go back and play Resident Evil on the PlayStation and realize that the voice acting is actually good in comparison, to the, in comparison to that game. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. Now I have to go examine this bed here. You just got in this prologue, prologue, you have to, like, examine a bunch of stuff for no reason in order to get out of the room, and that's really annoying. Okay. I examine the desk, and there's a replica of the scissors there. A giant pair of scissors is on the desk. They're a replica of little scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. They are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Examine the bookshelf or whatever it is. Hmm, there is a faint smell of ammonia. My laboratory. Lately, I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff is still here. You gotta examine the statue. This becomes very important later on in the game. You'll see why. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Talk to Beth. Really angry. <laughs> Getting to look like sisters. That that really doesn't make sense when they're really not. Uh, yes, yes, you're right. Scissor man's rubber mask, a kind sold in cheap novelty shops, and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Do you have an appointment for an interview? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Hmm, I, want, I guess they want to sensationalize this scissor man who really doesn't even exist. Scissor man, it'd be cool if he were real. Huh? Er, um, just a joke. Now you gotta examine this stupid computer. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is Harris's desk. Yeah. And why you have to examine this to leave the room, I have no clue. And now right here, this is a pretty important part of the game. Now Harris is out here, you talk to him once. During this uh, little section, you play as Helen. If you talk to him a second time, Jennifer will be the main character, but we're going to uh, be playing as Helen this time around. In the elevator, one thing you notice about this elevator, once it starts going like up or down or whatever, there's absolutely no ceiling whatsoever. Look at that. <laughs> I 
I know it's a stupid thing to complain about, but just thought I'd point it out. Now you have this long, boring conversation with Nolan and his big fat cameraman, Tim. Ugh. I'm a bit busy, please keep it brief. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? You can't su say anything for sure yet because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. <laughs> oh, do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? <laughs> Oh, uh, nothing, really. It's just we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And, she, and since we run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. You said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you are going to say. That monster she was talking about, the Scissor Man, and whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That's what our readers want to know. Because the existence of this Scissorman has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalized the whole thing. Ouch, that hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. There is something I must be attending to. Ah, well, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry, I couldn't be as much help as you had hoped. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murders. He's supposed to be a young boy about 10 years old. Back into the ceilingless elevator. I'm gonna go back to the second floor, obviously, heading back to the therapy room. And this university here will be the site of the very first scenario in the game. Pretty easy once you know your way around the place. Oh, here you'll see Harrison here. Now you have to talk to him. And then you have to talk to him about the about the statue. I'll show you what I mean. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. Now we got to examine the statue. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head uh, librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrow's mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Okay, now you gotta ask him. If you say yes, he'll take it to Rick. If you say no... Barton will take it to Professor Sullivan. We're sh having, gonna have him show it to Rick, because that's the better scenario, in my opinion, for number two. Harris, would you take this? 